Hey everybody, it's Ben Hodges from BHM Academy here. And today I'm talking to you about hand technique and how to hold your drumsticks properly. Now hand technique is so important because you need to be able to hit the drums efficiently and you're gonna be able to use your hand technique to properly use the power of the bouncing from the drums. When you hit the drums themselves, the drum stick is gonna bounce back off of it. If you have proper hand technique, you can use it to your advantage to go a little bit faster and more efficiently around the drums. Now there's two different types of grips that most people play when they're doing the drums. You might see this online in different places. There's something called the match grip, which means the right hand looks exactly as the same as the left hand and they match each other. So that's what typically lots of people play, including myself, which we're going to talk a lot about. But I will show you the other type, which is called a traditional grip, which is used in a li little bit more jazz or drumline kind of settings. And a traditional grip is actually looks like this. It looks like you're going for a handshake and you take the other drumstick and you place it in the webbing of your thumb and your uh, pointing finger and two fingers go on the top and two fingers go on the bottom. And what you're going to be looking for what the movement is, it's going to be turning like a doorknob. That's kind of the position that it moves. So the right hand will do a normal match grip, or I'll talk about that position in a second. But the traditional grip is more like turning a door handle. So two fingers on the top, two fingers below. So that's what the traditional grip looks like. But for all of the techniques and the hand techniques we're going to be talking about today, you can apply them directly to your traditional grip as well. So. Let's talk about how to hold these drumsticks and get them in the right position for you. So um, everything I'm talking about today is all about match grip specifically, um, but you can apply all these concepts to traditional grip if that's a direction that you wanna go. So first things first, we need to find the bounciest part of the drumstick, which is called the fulcrum. And the fulcrum is a point on the drumstick where the drumstick bounces the highest. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pointing finger, our index finger and our thumb, and we're gonna just place it on the drumstick and we're gonna let it bounce off the drum and see how high it goes. And we wanna find the place on the drumstick where the drumstick bounces the most. So let's start pretty low and see what happens. Okay, not that bouncy. Let's go a little bit higher. Let's go maybe a little bit, an inch higher. Okay, very bouncy here. Let's go even higher and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, it's not even enough weight to actually move the drumstick. So looks like. right about there. So you can see that's the most bounciest part and it gets the most bounces out of it. So that position there is called the fulcrum and that's where we're actually gonna be holding the drumstick between our thumb and our middle finger. So for this drum, it's a Vic Firth drum. It's kind of, for me, it's just below the flag on this style of drumstick. For different drumsticks, uh, they're weighted differently, they're different sizes, it might be in a different position. So some people put a little marker there, a little X or something. Um, some people just remember it like I do. So uh, you can choose. Now, how you hold the drumstick specifically is you're gonna take your, uh, for a match grip, you're gonna take your index finger and your thumb and you're gonna place it at that fulcrum part. Okay. You're going to take your other fingers here, let the bottom of the stick just rest in the palm of your hand, just along like that. So it's not sticking out this way. Okay, it's just going to rest inside. And the other fingers here are just going to caress it and be and use it as support. You're not going to grip the stick like a like you're angry at it. Okay, you want to make sure that you have your uh, just like the first little knuckle part of your pointing finger is just resting inside that drumstick and the thumb is all around it. Now, if you notice, uh, there's a bit of a hole here, there's a gap. You'll know that you're holding the drumstick correctly is when you can take the other drumstick and you can actually place it all the way through to the other side. So you know that's you're done it right. If you're holding it too tightly, the drumstick is not gonna go through. So this ensures that we have a nice, loose grip. We want a nice, loose, comfortable grip. We don't wanna be gripping and, and squeezing the drumstick too much or else it's not gonna be able to give us enough bounce. We want the drumstick to do a lot of the work when we play, right? We don't wanna, we wanna use less arms. We wanna use the power of the bounce and the rebound when we play. 
So that's important. So we're using a combination of our fingers and our wrist when we play. So that's important. So make sure you have a nice loose gap and you can also do that on both sides, right? You're, you're gripping the same way. So for match grip, remember you're just matching it to the other side. So we have our index part, our fingers, and we're ready to go. Okay, so a nice loose grip. So that's how you hold the drumstick for match grip. Um, in traditional grips, same idea, you will be able to find that fulcrum point or the point bounciest, and you're gonna place, instead of your pointing finger, you're gonna place the middle finger at that part, and it's gonna be able to bounce in that sense. Okay, so let's keep talking about match grip. Now for match grip, there are different styles that people play. There's something called a German, an American, and a French grip. Um, and these are the types of grips that uh, that you would, the positions you would hold your drumsticks in match grip for that have different uses. So for example, the French grip is a position where it uses all fingers and this drumsticks himself will be kind of close to going in the same direction and the palms will be facing each other, kind of like you're clapping. And what it is, is you're using all fingers. So it looks something like this. So you notice how my wrist wasn't moving, but it's all my fingers. I'm just letting my fingers do lots of the work. So this is good for lighter or quieter sounds of play like jazz, and maybe I would use this on a hi-hat cymbal like this. So there's an example of where I could use it, um, but it gives me lots of control for the fingers. Um, the second type that I use uh, is called an American grip. And the American grip is the palms are not facing each other, but they're slighted, turned inwards, and it's at about a 45 degree angle. And uh, the drumsticks now are a little bit more spaced out, and it's using a bit of fingers and a bit of wrists at the same time. So it's it's very versatile. It's kind of like the middle ground between us. So it's not all fingers and it's not all wrists. It's actually a little bit of both. So I would be able to use this uh, in a good normal fashion, I would say. So this is what people would consider kind of a normal grip. And then there's the German grip. And German grip is about power and, and force. So if you want to hit with a little bit of loudness, uh, the German grip is where it is. So the drumsticks themselves will go even farther out at about 45 degree angle, and the palms are facing down. And it's a lot of wrist power, a lot of wrist power, okay? It's not so much fingers. You'll notice it, when you're in this position, you, it's harder to use your fingers. So this is for more like louder volume hits, okay? so. That's kind of what the German grip is for. So you have a variety of French, you have American, and you have German. And uh, for different parts of songs or different styles of songs or different uh, volumes that you're supposed to hit the drums for, uh, you kind of use all of those hits in a variety of ways. You're not just stuck to one way. You're not always doing the French grip. Uh, you can utilize and use all three different styles as well. And it's good to practice um, when you're playing rudiments or you're playing the drums is to get uh, some good experience with the different styles, um, the, both all the French, the American, and the German grip. Lastly, the thing you want to consider as well is when you're playing in those styles and with your appropriate hand technique is when you're practicing, always have the good hand technique, but always make sure you're aiming for the center of the drums, the center of them, okay? You don't want to hit to the edge, and I'll show you what that sounds like. If I do a, a, a snare roll on the inside of the drum versus the outside, so this is what it sounds like in the middle where it should. So that's where the middle, now I'm gonna hit on the outside. Notice how different that sounds? It sounds a bit more hollow. So all the drums are designed to sound the best when you hit them in the center. That's the goal. You wanna try and practice your aim, all right? So try and practice your aim hitting in the center of all your drums, especially as you're moving around the drums. It's quite common, especially when you're learning, to miss a lot. And if you look at the stick marks on my drums, I miss a lot too. It's normal, it's okay. But uh, you wanna make your drums sound the best and to execute the best, you wanna try and hit them directly in the middle if you can. For cymbals, you can hit them on the side. It makes a different side on the on the edge here. Uh, you can hit them on the on the top with your drum tip, and you can also hit them on the bell as well. Um, and there's lots of different sounds 
that um, that the cymbals can make and depends where you hit it. So that is a bit more customizable, but for the actual drums themselves, they're designed to hit them in the center. So make sure you try and aim in the center using proper hand technique. Can't stress that enough. Now for the movements that your drumstick actually does, it's more like a whipping motion. So it's actually going up with your, it's like going up with your wrist. So for example, it's pretending like I have a string tied around to my wrist and I'm gonna pull the string up, okay? That's the motion that it's gonna be doing. Lots of people think that drumming, and especially new drummers, they use their arms like this and they're bashing around like pots and pans. And there's, uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty funny to watch actually, but it's, it's uh, quite hard, to, hard on the body to do that as well and pretty hard on the drums, I feel. Oh, poor drums. So using the bounce, you're actually staying nice and loose with your grip. You're utilizing the bounce. So the drumstick will actually bounce automatically up. And so all you have to do is like a whipping motion or your wrist and the drumstick will do the work for you, okay? So it's a whipping motion. Up, whip, up, whip, up, whip, up, whip. And when you start to do um, double strokes, which means two on one hand, uh, you're gonna use your fingers. So it looks like this. Right, so when you get to the whipping motion, it goes up, and then down, and when I hit the drumstick, I use my fingers and I pull my fingers in to make a little whipping or to make the drumstick go down one more time. So you can use your fingers and your wrists and that whipping motion to get lots of doubles and triple strokes even, um, but you're playing them in a proper direction. So I hope that was very helpful for you in terms of how to hold your drumsticks. Make sure you always practice with great hand technique and aim for the center of the drums and practice the French grip, the American grip, and the German grip. Um, and get a good experience with those. It will really help your drumming uh, in the long run. For more help with all your drumming, to answer any questions you have, check out my website with free resources and lesson packs on www.bhdrumacademy.com. See you folks.